Bad weather obstructing the controller and pilot's view. Pilots and drivers unfamiliar with airport layout. Language issues, heavy traffic, complex runway and taxiway design. What are the accidents that these have in common? It is runway incursion. Runway incursion is defined by ICAO and FAA as any occurrence at an aerodome involving the incorrect presence of an aircraft, vehicle, or person on the protected area of a surface designated for the landing and takeoff of aircraft. When it comes to runway incursion, people will simply think of an aircraft invading the hold line or a vehicle entering the runway without permission. However, in the FAA statistics on runway incursions that occurred in the United States in 2020, among 1,262 runway incursions, pilot errors were the most at 841, followed by vehicle and personnel errors with 241, and controller errors with 161. These statistics show that runway incursion is occurring frequently and that the controller can also be at the center of runway incursion accidents. The most famous runway incursion accident caused by the controller's mistake is as follows. At around 6.07 p.m. on February 1, 1991, despite VFR weather conditions, skilled controllers, and moderate traffic, the incredible aircraft crash broke out on the runway of Los Angeles International Airport in the United States. When a Metroliner Type SkyWest 5569, a twin-engine turboprop aircraft, made a takeoff request from Taxiway 45, the controller instructed the pilot to hold short of runway 24 left, and the pilot read back it. The Boeing 737 type US Air 1493, which was approaching 6 miles on final for a landing runway 24 left, informed his position by contacting the controller. At that time, the controller tried to contact Wings West 5006 waiting at midfield taxiway 52 to cross runway 24 left after landing on the runway 24 right. The controller instructed SkyWest 5569 to enter runway 24 left and hold on the runway because of Wings West 5006. The controller attempted to communicate with the Wings West 5006 several times when the cross was possible, but the failure was repeated because the Wings West 5006 set the wrong frequency. This unnecessary communication was enough to distract the controller. The US Air 1493 pilot once again informed the controller of his position. The controller conducted other radio transmissions and then issued a landing clearance. US Air 1493, land runway 24 left. Little land 24 left, 1493. But that communication became the last contact with US Air 1493. The controller, who had completely forgotten SkyWest 5569, was in control of other aircraft after issuing landing clearance to U.S. Air 1493. Wings West 5072 on parallel taxiway called the controller and stated that they were ready for takeoff. The controller, which did not have the Wings West 5072's flight progress strip, was eager to check the position of this aircraft and find the strip. This became a decisive factor for missing the last golden time when the runway scan was possible. Eventually, the nose gear of U.S. Air 1493 touched down on the runway and immediately collided with SkyWest 5569 on the runway. At the time of the accident, the height of Terminal 2 and its top lighting prevented insight into the section between the taxiway 45 and taxiway 47 when viewed from the control tower. Also, the positioning light of the SkyWest 5569 has a color similar to the runway light, so the U.S. Air 1493 pilot did not notice the aircraft on the runway until the moment he touched down the runway. However, the biggest cause of this accident was the controller's wrong judgment. The controller forgot the fact that SkyWest 5569 was on the runway while trying to communicate with WingsWest 5006, who was setting the wrong frequency. Despite having to scan the runway after issuing landing clearance to U.S. Air 1493, she missed the golden time because she was eager to locate the Wings West 5072 on the taxiway and find the strip of this aircraft. This was the worst result of the controller's false judgment. Likewise, let's think of the cases where the controller is a cause for runway incursion accidents. The first case is when the controller forgets the information. 
There are several situations, such as when the controller issues the permission of either taking off or landing clearance, forgetting the vehicles or aircraft on the runway, and when the controller allows the taking off of an aircraft, forgetting the fact that the other aircraft is landing on the same runway. The second case is when the controller fails to predict minimum separation. Let's say that the controller instructed the takeoff aircraft to line up on the runway, expecting that it will be able to take off earlier than the aircraft on the final phase. If the controller fails to predict between the time when the landing aircraft approaches the threshold of the runway and the airborne time of the departing aircraft, then the landing aircraft will have to go around. The third one is when the information is not shared among the controllers. The typical runway incursion of this case occurs when the ground controller allows the vehicle to enter the runway without the local controller's permission. Lastly, the accident frequently occurs when the controller gives an instruction on a complex taxi route using long sentences or non-standard phraseology, therefore causing an error in the pilot's understanding. Then, let's do the opposite of previous cases to prevent the situation. One, don't forget the information. Prepare the assist devices such as an alarm or safety measures on every control unit. Two, use the time data. Gather the data of time taken for each aircraft's route and use it in separation. If you expect the separation will be tight, choose a delay option. Three, share the information. The system has to be established for every controller to recognize the notice on the vehicles entering and clearing the runway. Four, make the control instructions simple and use the standard phraseology as much as possible. Control instructions on a complex route need to be divided into sections, put in simple instruction, and make every pilot understand the controller's transmission regardless of their nationality by using moderate speed and standard phraseology. In addition to it, make sure to check the aircraft's position that you're controlling. When the weather is bad, the controller especially needs to be active and take a closer look. When the accident occurs due to the pilot, it will be mostly because the pilot is not aware of their own position or does not follow the controller's instruction. The pilot often enters the wrong route when they are mistaken that entering the runway is permitted, or the pilot is unfamiliar with the airport, or the pilot does not understand the controller's instruction. If the pilot is not clear with his or her current position when taxiing, don't hesitate to make a call to the controller in this situation. Vehicle's driver is also one of the major cause of runway incursion accidents. In September 2018, one man on the vehicle entered the runway and engaged in a chase with the police at Lyons St. Exupery Airport, making the aircraft at the airport suspended for a while. On the 2nd of February 2019, a snowplow sweeper crossed the holding position of the runway and continued on the runway at Montreal Pierre Elliott Trudeau International Airport, making a final aircraft go around at approximately 157 feet. Not only do both vehicle drivers and pedestrians have to follow the controller's instructions, but they also look around carefully even if they receive permission while on the runway. Besides, the complex structures of the airport often cause runway incursion when there are many taxiways near the runway and many routes that have to cross the runway. Many airports all over the world have various assist systems to block the human factors causing runway incursion. Let's take a look at some of the most typical ones. The first one is ASDE, which is a surface surveillance radar. ASDE is an abbreviation of airport surface detection equipment that detects the aircraft or moving objects within runway, taxiway, and ramp and display them on the radar the controllers see. It is one of the most representative prevention equipment that allows the controller to monitor the movement of aircraft through radar display even in the situation where it is hard to detect the aircraft's position either when visibility is bad or at night. The second way is to designate hot spot. A hotspot is defined as a location on an airport movement area with a history of potential risk of collision or runway incursion and where heightened attention by pilots and drivers is necessary. When a hotspot is included in the airport's chart, the pilot and the controller both can be more alert. In addition, there is a need to improve marking and signs that can cause confusion for pilots. The third way is to use the runway status light. This system is one kind of traffic light installed in the runway and taxiway. But this is not a standing traffic light, but the lamp buried under the surface of the runway and taxiway. 
It prevents the runway incursion caused by the mistakes of controllers and pilots in advance by visually letting the pilot know the situation that the current runway is not safe for taking off, entering, and crossing. The runway status light system consists of two types which are takeoff hold lights and runway entrance lights. Takeoff hold lights is an alert meaning do not take off, hold, to the pilot on the runway who is waiting for taking off and away of the red lights on. The lights are on when other aircraft or vehicles are on the runway. Runway entrance lights is an alert that indicates the runway is currently occupied for departing or landing. It is to signal the pilot and vehicle to hold short of the runway and not to enter or cross the runway. Runway status light system is automatically operated with the information acquired from connecting ASR, ASDE and MLAT. Although it's obvious, even if the situations get cleared and the lights are turned off, the controller's permission is required before taking off, entering, or crossing the runway. It is also important to ensure that the control room pillars do not obstruct the controller's view and eliminate the communication blind area. If the controller cannot see a specific section of the runway or taxiway from the control tower it must be resolved by using equipment such as CCTV. Since the runway incursion accident previously mentioned, Los Angeles International Airport has built a higher control tower in a new location and upgraded radar devices. Many other airports around the world are also trying their best with various assist systems to prevent runway incursion. However, it is not possible to completely get rid of all the errors in situation recognition only with systems and technology development. This is why the aviation workers themselves have to be continuously alert through case studies. It is surely possible to predict and perfectly prevent the situations. It's all up to us. ATC for you.